Welcome. We've got the whole Efficiency Matrix team on site today. We're down at Phillip Island in Cowes, and we're here to do a preliminary air tightness test on this Cowes community building. Now, it's not completed. That's why it's a preliminary test. We're going to look for defects or issues in the air barrier system so they can be tidied up before the construction, possibly complete in two or three months' time. Look, it's a beautiful building. It's been designed by Jackson Clement Burrows and built by McCorkle Constructions. I'm going to walk around the building with you and just show you some of the construction methodologies. Very much an external brick veneer building, but in behind all this brick veneer, you'll find we've got quite an elaborate CLT construction with typical steel portal frame construction at the theatre end and a lot of CLT at the community building end. And it's going to be a bit of fun walking around and we're going to get ready for the test come about midday and that'll give us a fair idea how they're going targeting the passive house air tightness target we're trying to achieve on this building. Okay, so we've entered the building and you can see there's some dramatic spaces. There's great use of glass and light and the, the volumes are fantastic and the use of timber is just dramatic. So we've headed off into the theatre end of the building, which is very much a steel portal frame building with infill steel stud, 150 mil stud typically. So you'll find the walls end up really actually being about so thick. It's made up of brickwork, cavity, you've got your external weather barrier, vapour permeable, and that's onto a generally a 90 mil cool therm phenolic board. So that's a continuous insulation on the outside of the stud. Your 150 mil stud with glass wool in it. Then you've got your internal air barrier. So it's our internal air barrier and vapour barrier is what we're testing the effectiveness of today. But it's obviously internally floor to ceiling sealed off to the underside of the roof membrane, the air barrier that's applied to the roof membrane. And then we're battening off or battening or I'd say in this case there's additional stud work to accommodate all the internal feature timber to this theatre space. So again, the walls ended up so big, effectively there's an insulated rigid foam stud air barrier battened or secondary stud space, you know, that's equating to something like about that thickness within this wall construction. It's impressive. It's very well insulated, having continuous insulation around the entire outside of this building. When we look up at the roof, which is as important as any other part of the building, really this whole building has a composite insulated panel. So it's a, I'll call it a king span insulated panel, you know, in the 150 mil thick. It's primarily an airtight solution, as long as we actually understand that we need to make sure all the joints and all the transitions are, are airtight, maybe corked as well. But below that, there's additional insulation and there's also additional plasterboarding type systems to handle all the acoustic requirements of this building. At different locations around the building, we've got service type cores where we have lifts and so forth. So they're masonry block construction encapsulating the lifts. So how we've dealt with the air barrier and insulation is masonry block. We've put our liquid applied air barrier on the outside of the masonry block, but that's okay because then we apply our insulation over the top of that. So our air barrier is inside the insulation. So it's really on the warm side. So we're avoiding any condensation risk. One of the few areas where the air, the air and vapour barrier that's on the inside face of the insulation is actually still exposed, hasn't actually been finished off just yet. So you can see what it looks like, obviously taped and sealed. It's quite well installed given it's a, you know, a complex building. The Proclimber Intello wrap has been used as the air barrier throughout. So one of the features of this building is purely the use of the timber and the CLT throughout this communal side of the building. So. This CLT remains exposed, so we don't generally say to ourselves that CLT is completely airtight. I mean, these actual panels are actually, I think, even five laminations, so you'd have to say they're airtight. But what we decided to do on this building is to maintain a consistency around the air barrier, so to use the internal wrap as our air barrier strategy. So CLT, onto the back of this CLT is the Proclimber Intello air barrier. Then you have your layers of rigid foam insulation, 90 mil thick, your external weather barrier wrap, then you've got your cavity and your brickwork. So we're exposing the CLT, we still have our wrap, but it's on the outside face, but it's still on the inside face of the insulation. So it's still, we avoid the condensation risk by keeping the air and vapour barrier on the warm side of the insulation. 
the other critical element to the air tightness of a building, other than the floors, the walls and the roof, is going to be obviously the glazing system. So whether it's windows, doors and windows, we would always make sure that we get a test result on the system to ensure that it's been tested for air tightness and it complies with the target, in this case, Passive House. What's interesting about this preliminary test is that the actual doors themselves haven't arrived from Germany as yet. So these doors have actually been temporarily applied to the building, only purely just for the access, or just to maintain uh, some weather resistance to the building. So what we've done here, just to get ourselves ready for this test today, is just to cancel out the doors from the test by simply taping them up airtight. So you can see the green wrap we've applied to all the door openings. There's probably about half a dozen or more. Okay, so we're on site and I'm with Ed Russick, who's our air tightness champion. So yeah. funny enough, from Efficiency Matrix, when we're sort of developing a strategy for air tightness, and in this case, Passive House, at the very final page of our report, we have, we require an air tightness champion to spend his yeah. life on site. That was me. Looking after all the trades. Yep. and all the issues, ticking it off. So give us your experience, and I don't. this is your first passive house, isn't it? Yeah, this is my first. I didn't know what I was getting into at the start. It's been a difficult process. Glad that I've done it, actually. But now we're coming to the pointy end. Uh, I'm really excited to see how this test goes. Some of the challenges we faced, the general QAing of the building, you need to be kind of um, here on site a lot of the time. If you miss something, you kind of miss the chance to go back yes. and uh, fix it. You're spot on. If you haven't got your finger on the pulse, sort of with the trades, and you try to induct a trade into the air tightness strategy. Well, it's, it's a series of, like you train, like with, with the subcontractor we had, um, you're training them up and then you lose a guy, you're training them up again, training them up again. So, That's what I was gonna say. They bring on an apprentice yeah. and something or other and all of a sudden yeah. you start to lose track. So if I could have my time again, I'd have a team from that subcontractor going from start to finish, working with me, exactly. installing the airtight membrane, doing all the penetrations with my QAing. That would have been perfect, but yep. over the course, 12 months is a long time, people want to go on holiday, people hate the yes. job, you know. It is a boring and tedious task. On a building this big, yeah. it's um, a lot of staring at walls, a lot of caulking. A lot of caulking I've done myself. Um, I could have, at the start, just said, I'm not going to do any of the actual installation, the airtight membrane yep. myself, but I decided to take a hands-on approach because I knew that if I was doing it myself after they've installed the airtight membrane, my QAing process would be aided because I'd be up there in the corner of the building looking at the same thing they're looking at, which I believe hopefully gets us over the line. Yeah. Yeah, but it took a, it, a lot of work. I tell you what, you just put your finger on the basic issue of Patrick House construction, especially on this sort of scale, is that the trades change or they yeah. bring in new people and you start to and lose control. And it's the first time it. they've done it as well, you know. Exactly. First time I've done it, first time they've done it, and it's completely new in, in the industry around here. So Okay. How were the stress levels? Construction. Um, look, it's just <laughs> getting a little bit. Uh, yeah, definitely, tense. definitely. You, I've, some points I've been walking around like a crazy person. It feels like staring at walls. But the hardest part was just keeping the energy high about like every wall needs to be QA'd right. And when you're seven months in and you got another six months to go, it's hard to keep that same energy you know going. finger on the pulse, finger on the pulse. So that was the hard part for me. Yeah. You've got to wake up in the morning and motivate yourself. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You've got to wake up in the morning no, and motivate yourself. I that is true. Thoroughly, that's true. thoroughly understand it too, and that's a common, a common, you know, sort of issue we have on site is maintaining that focus on it. And look, it's, it's only air tightness in a funny way, yeah. but of course it's passive house. So yeah. that's the complexity is getting it down to that level of air tightness to comply with passive house. Absolutely, yeah. So you uh, can't fudge the air tightness test. You can't fudge yeah. it. We're going to run a preliminary test very shortly. Yeah, we are. Because we've spent the morning preparing for it. Yep. So that's going to be interesting. But that again, you've be. got another month or six weeks before this building's finished. Yeah. So whatever the result is today, you've got the ability to try and tidy up any of the little issues that we might be able to identify. I would have I would have loved to have done it sooner. At yeah. this point, if we have problems with the actual airtight membrane, it's behind a whole a lot, lot of walls. Like a lot of walls which we have to take apart, which is the cost involved in that. So yep. I'm hoping that we're very close to the mark here. Let's uh, prepare ourselves for yeah, this test yeah. and let's see how close yeah. we are. Yep. Anyway, you've done a fantastic job. You're certainly motivated, so yeah, can, thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. It's been fun, I tell you that much. Great stuff. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. You might be able to hear in the background the lower door test is still uh, being carried out. So, But at the moment, it's very encouraging. We're sitting at 
potentially under one, what we would call permeability rate of one cubic metre per square metre of building envelope. So that's a great start at this preliminary stage. There's a lot of unfinished areas around the building. There's a lot of troubleshooting going on at the moment. So with that in mind, knowing that we actually now have identified where the majority of the leaks are, we would anticipate that with you know fair amount of ease, we can hit the target of Passive House at completion of construction.